I can assure you, if they say to you today, how many of you want to leave this country? Don't be shy. Raise your hand. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Don't be shy of saying that. The things that tell people, what drives people having faith, but they don't have faith. What drives people having faith? Oh. If we go to church on a Sunday and the priest says there's no heaven, what do you think will happen? Oh, wow. Nobody stays where there's no hope. There must be what drives a people's future is hope. And the reason why you want to live here is because you have hope. Nobody. Nobody knows if he goes to where there's a problem. Go to your house, you see ants. Ants. This is the animal moving. You put fire here, they'll turn. So even the animal, the ants don't want trouble. If you push sugar, they'll come. But if you put fire, you see them, they turn away. Because they don't want trouble. They want sweet. That sweet is their hope. And what they be is one will come, the rest will follow him. That's how you can transfer the rest. Your country today is going through trouble times. It's qualified for two things that makes a failed state. When you're no longer in control of your territory, everybody is insecure here, including you. You're nobody safe. Nobody knows. The only thing you hear now is bad news. Number two is when you're no longer in control of your economy. Your parents, yourself, you're having problems. You don't have a job. It is difficult for you to know where the next thing will come from. Your parents no longer know what they're going to spend for a bag of rice today. A bag of beans. If they send somebody to the market, when it comes back, Whatever it goes back, that is the price of for it for that day. You can't plan with that. So you must change. Why did we arrive here? This is cumulative effect of our leadership over the years. It is one person can do good fight of in government when they strike hard to cancel our debts. So we are not going by the time they left. Today, from a position where our foreign and domestic debt was less than $10 billion when they left, they cleaned out our side ones. Today, our total debt is over $130 billion. And nobody can show anything for it. You know what it means for you that you get up in the morning, you give me money has been borrowed, nobody, no new funds, no new, new. everybody is telling the story. That is the state of your country. We are in the mess. The consequence is that we didn't return the left office and town, we moved on employment of about less than 15% to about 35%. So you have doubled your unemployment. And you double your poverty. And you have crisis. If you don't know where the next thing is come, come, come from, you are dangerous. And it's not because anything, if you look all of us up here now, for four days, everybody's looking for food. Nobody knows who will do anything wrong. I will be looking for food. You will be looking for food. If you get stronger, we might eat each other. It's simple. So you double the poverty. People no longer have job, they don't have anything. You have 35% unemployment. With youth unemployment of almost 60%. Young people in their productive age, with full energy, with talent, no job. It's a crisis in any country, of the world, not just Nigeria. And that's what you're facing through. You have 20 million on adult school children. You have all sorts of things going on. I don't want to tell you about what is wrong because you know what is wrong because I affects you every day. 
What do you want to hear that is how do we start getting out of here? Yeah. Because it's no longer what you know, I had an uncle. Yes, back. So that's why he said, you know everything. My uncle was arrested in the village and they put her cough in that. And they were going away. Everybody who talked in the village had said, Okay, what is wrong? He said, There's nothing wrong. Okay, what is there's nothing wrong? And they called me and said, Okay, they have arrested the Okoye. We don't know why they came to the village and took him, blah, 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 but it was a handcuff. Okoye is there. always causing one problem or He has insulted the police, uh, deputy DP, blah, blah, blah. So, I called them, I called them and said, Ah, you went to the house and this happened to the Okoye. You know exactly what I said, but the man is always telling me. So, so I came to the village and I asked him, this man saw you. You told him there's no problem. This man said, no, there's no problem. He caused all of them. We called this man and said, you are a very stupid man. God will punish you. This man, he said, I'm stupid. There's no problem. And he asked me about trouble. <laughs> because there's trouble in his hand already. So I asked him whether there's trouble. Trouble is there now because he's in the of so all of you know the trouble. What are we going to do? A senior of us is going to tell you the same problem. A senior of us will tell you the same thing. Nobody's going to tell you, we are going to tell you sweet things. We want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do that. None of us will trust everything that is good. My dear people, the question is that you must verify it is now time to listen and say next year's election from president to the last person you must verify it we have no roof experiment again it is not going to be based on party it's going to be based on person structure you hear people talk about today is structure of criminality. Structure of destruction. Structure that brought us to this junction. That's what we want to remove. We want to remove that structure and put in a structure of development. We will go forward with what to do. What do you need to do? First is that you, a government must focus on fighting and dealing with the issue of security of life and property. Nigerians must be secure. If you secure Nigeria today, the end of and everything, you get the farmers to go back to the farm. And when they go back to the farm, you bring down food inflation. So we we'll start seeing food prices. Food inflation will come down. Things will start changing. How are you going to do it? You need to escape up the manpower in your police, in your army, in your navy, the whole agencies are only man. We have 370,000 police people, but the IT told me it's about 320. If you remove about 70,000 and following people like me around, it is down to 250. For a country of 270 million people, it cannot work. Egypt is 100 million and they have about a million police. So you need to scale down. By that, you're creating jobs, you're creating everything. A more secure place. And the, more, the remaining ones are fully equipped. Only half have guns. We must equip them. We must employ them. We must increase our manpower, security manpower, employ them and equip them. When you do that, simultaneously as you are doing it, you are tackling moving Nigeria.
from consumption to production. Once the country is productive, you will start pulling people out of poverty. The more you pull people out of poverty, the more people have means of livelihood, the more you reduce criminality. Nobody wants to go and commit problem, be in jail if he finds food to eat. You must invest in the youth. That is the future of Nigeria. You must invest in you. You must put more in the Because you have the energy and the talent to develop the companies. Every country of the world is in the debate. Teaching of God. In any part of the world, it's what we call micro, small enterprises. Which is you. We must invest in you. That is you. Everything is not done. We're wasting everybody's time. So we must. And how do you start it? You think about feeding yourself. Nigeria must feed itself. We can no longer continue to be dependent on this. And feeding ourselves means that people will invest in agriculture and everything. Nigeria today is not feeding itself. A country of 220 million people, if India at 1.4 billion can feed itself, Nigeria for 220 million can feed itself. We have more farmland than India. India is 1.4 billion people living on 3.2 million square kilometers of land. We are 220, even on 900 square kilometers, which means we live on a third of Indian land and we are one of our So we, there's no way we have more land space than India. So if we have more land space than India, we have more to cultivate, to feed ourselves. You go to Enugu estate alone. All those lands Nuzu one and everything. Eh? No, go, I'm not talking about the Enugu state, Enugu capital. Go to Nuzu one. Go to Nuzu one. I fly around. One of the things in Enugu. Most of the land in Nigeria, over 50 percent of the arable land in Nigeria is not cultivated and we can't find food. No country in the world. No country in the world can do that. Because we are consuming content. All everybody wants is where to share, where to make easy money. Those countries you want to go to, there's no free lunch. You have to work. But we'll be paid. That's what we want to do. So we must feed ourselves. If you feed ourselves today, the story will be different. Frank knows our GDP today is about 180 trillion naira. And agriculture, we are not feeding ourselves, it's about 41 trillion, this is about 20 something percent. If you feed ourselves, you double that. Your job, it will about eight. And your, 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 your.